hi everyone and welcome to another episode of our Irish Country Life here in the west coast of Ireland. It's springtime, almost summer, and I'm trying to get the gardens ready for our grand opening on in June. So today I'm going to give you a very short tour of just some of the bits in the garden that are in bloom at the moment because I feel when we do the in-depth tour you'll miss on the fabulous things that were in flower now. Um, also, I have later on for you a delicious homemade luxury apple crumble which I will be making for you and I do hope you'll try it because it is an apple crumble to die for. So at the moment I've just fed the fish so it'll take them a few minutes to come up to the surface and we spent the day today clearing out the pond. It had a lot of oxygenator in the pond to uh, keep the pond and the fish in the pond oxygenated. I remember one lady last year who visited the garden said to me, your pond is very dirty. The pond that I created here in the wildlife garden at Heathfield was designed to be a reflections pond. And one of the reasons for that was because I came to this area and stood for a few moments and there was a puddle and I could see the beautiful canopy of the tree above in the puddle. And I thought, wouldn't that be lovely if I could replicate that on a much bigger scale? And so that's what I've done. I've built a reflection pond it doesn't have electricity, it doesn't have filters, it doesn't have pumps, and the wildlife seem to thrive in it. I've got hundreds of fish, I've got frogs, I've got newts, I've got everything in it. So dragonflies land on here. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with this pond except the waters do look a little murky, and that's all purposely intended to give the effect of what's growing above in the canopy of the trees. So it's a reflection pond. So I set out six years ago to create a wildlife sanctuary somewhere that I could come, do a little bit of gardening and feel like I can get lost in it. And I think, I think I very, very nearly finished creating that. And it's an ongoing project and it's developing all the time. I don't know if you remember last year, I planted the echiums and I put three here by the pond and they will be, they're a native species to South Africa and they will grow like this perhaps for another year. And then next summer, they should form a spike and they should shoot up into the sky like a rocket and then be surrounded with lovely little either blue or white flowers. I can't remember which species I've got where. Um, so they are lovely and the bees adore them. So I'm going to point out to you the beautiful azaleas at the moment. This burnt orange colour is absolutely exquisite at this time of the year. And it's really, really lovely. There is another one somewhere, but I don't know where. But anyway, that's the burnt orange one at the moment. And also the candelabra primulas are really starting to show and they are looking stunning at the moment in this lovely cerise pink. I do have some orange ones and some yellow ones, but they seem to flower a little bit later on. The fuchsia pink ones seem to flower first. Then moving on over here, I want to show you the beautiful display of white. And again, this all happened by accident. There was no planning in this at all, but I ended up with the white wedding cake viburnum and this white Libertia, which has got the most beautiful flower, almost orchid-like. And it's really stunning on a beautiful, spiky architectural leaf plant. This wedding cake by Burnham tree, I have to tell you, I got a small baby from my friend Anne in Screen, who is also a member of the Sligo Secret Gardens. And she gave it to me, and her wedding cake by Burnham is about this high. And she gave me the baby of the parent tree, the mother tree, and it's four times bigger than hers and getting bigger by the day. So when she comes to help me on the open day with making the tea and the cake, she is very, very unimpressed with how well mine has done in comparison to hers. She always makes excuses why hers isn't doing so well. But anyway, it's because I talk to this one and I give it much love. And Scooty does too, don't you, Scooter? Are you eating the fish food? Come here, Scoot. You rascal. So this week's drama with the boy scooter is we've had a fallout. We've had a fallout with Teddy down the lane because Teddy has informed Scooter that he's going on a rough and tumble with Maggie. That didn't go down very well, even though Scooter dumped Maggie. So he's now not talking to Teddy, which we thought was going to be a lovely friendship and blossom into besties but that's not going to happen, at least not anytime soon. So what are we going to do, Scooter? Where is Teddy? Scooter? Where's Teddy? 
Why are you making out like you don't even know his name? Huh? What are you going to do with Teddy? Are you going to make up with Teddy? No? What are we going to do? You don't like Teddy because of what he's done to you. But he hasn't done anything because you finished it with Maggie months ago. Still. So I'm laughing at this tree. This is called a globe buddleia. So it basically has little balls which are beautiful orange in colour. So it's a form, it's a member of the Budlia family, but I'd never seen one before until a few years ago. And another lady who has a garden in Sligo had an open day and I went along and she was uh, selling some plants for charity. So I bought a glow Budlia from her, which was the size of this little piece here. Okay. And I took her advice. I said to her, what shall I do? She said, stick it in the ground and see what happens. And so I did. And it's now a massive tree which is very impressive. And I've just seen a little white butterfly fly past me. That's the first one I've seen this year. And I underplanted that with a round white ball viburnum, but I can't see it. So maybe it was a casualty in the frost. However, I do have a beautiful oak leaf hydrangea in here, which is nice and that survived. So I'm very happy with that. And I also see a little Aquilegia granny bonnet, beautiful bluey coloured one popping up in here as well as there is a few weeds folks because we haven't got round to completely finishing the weeding yet but then Rome wasn't built in a day. Here we have the white rhododendron which is in full bloom at the moment and this rhododendron actually flowers twice. It flowers now and then it flowers again a bit later. Every year I keep threatening that I'm going to cut this back because it's got very big. However I planted three together a few years ago to try and create an impact. And here I am now saying, now that it's got the impact, I want to take the impact away. So it's kind of backward thinking, but sometimes you have to go backwards to move forwards. So that's the white rhododendron. Also, I want to show you this beautiful monk's bead or Solomon seal as it's more natively known. And I can hear bumblebees everywhere. So they're actually in the Solomon seal. And there's Harold as well, just to annoy Scooter, but he hasn't heard him yet. Okay, and the story behind this one was, I spotted this in again in another one of the secret gardens, and I was with a couple who I know very well from touring the gardens, and I said to them, what is that? And they said, oh, we have that. It's called Solomon Seal Monk's Beads. And I said, okay, I really like that. And then I came home from Sligo one day, and outside the front door, there was a pot with a beautiful ribbon on it and a piece of Solomon Seal monk's bead, which is this piece here, which has quadrupled in size. And that was a lovely gift to have. And I really didn't think that would do well in my garden. And it absolutely has. And I've been able to take some cuttings from this and plant in other places, which it hasn't done very well. But anyway, I have it here. I must put it somewhere else along here. So in case I lose it, I've got it somewhere else. That's always a good tip for the garden. Here in flower on the mound, which I call it, because it was just a mound of old rubble at one point. And I remember saying to Chris, I really need to get a digger in, a bulldozer, and flatten this and spread it and all. And then I thought, no, you know what? I was watching Bloom in Dublin once on the television, and they had a mound garden. And so I thought, I'm going to create a mound garden. So I did. It does need a little bit of filling up here and there, but it's well on its way to achieving what I set out to achieve. And this beautiful orange, burnt orange geum, almost like an ochre colour, is stunning. Okay, this is a member of the borage family with its big leaf, because you know at this stage I love big leaf plants. And this in springtime, early, early spring, so sort of February, March, has a lovely cornflower, blue flower. Now, it has kind of taken over this area, and I will be pairing it back um, at the end of the season this year and moving some of it to around the woodland bit to sort of almost create a boundary for where the garden finishes and, and starts. So that's a member of the barge. It begins with a T. I have got the name written down somewhere, but I don't know the name of it off by heart. And I don't know if you can see in the distance in the kitchen garden, there is the most beautiful poppy, which has just opened. And it's just like crepe paper. And it's just beautiful, almost like somebody spilled red wine on a white poppy. It's really lovely. Okay, now I'm up here in the raised vegetable beds. And I'm just going to show you, I'm not a vegetable person for growing. They don't seem to work for me, but I thought I'd keep trying. And so now this spring, I've sown some butterhead lettuce. I've sown some spring onions, scallions, and I've sown some cabbage and also some broccoli. 
So we'll just try out this one panel here and we'll see how we go with that. But at the moment it's looking rather nice. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we might get some lettuce at least and spring onions. I don't think we can go wrong with them, surely. But hey, you never know. And the cabbages might do well, although they don't look like cabbages, but they, they have assured me they will look like cabbages eventually. And lastly, I just want to point out this beautiful Puri's tree because I just love the shape that it's formed all on its own. It looks very Japanesey. I love the rustic old bark that's peeling away. And I just love the shape and the format that it has taken on. This is the Puri's tree. So now, my friends, come join me where I'll go inside, wash my hands, scrub up, and we'll make that delicious luxury apple crumble for you. See you in a mo. Okay, you guys, so now, everybody's favorite is apple crumble. However you like it, custard, sauce on glaze, ice cream, or like me, just a dollop of freshly whipped cream. This luxury apple crumble, and I call it luxury because there's a few extra ingredients that I like to put into this one. It's so simple, a five-year-old can do it. So come on, guys, get your dinner party going with the most amazing apple crumble for the summer coming. I know people associate it with a winter pudding because of the custard, but it's not. Summer, all year round, every day of the week. And let's face it, we live in the west coast of Ireland, it's winter every day of the week. But we won't let that stop us. So what you'll need for this is you need a Pyrex dish. I'm using a nice, shallow, big Pyrex dish because we're going to get about 10 to 12, 15 portions, depending on how big or small you like your portion of apple crumble. So this is probably about four portions in my house. But anyway, <laughs> eight portions, 10 portions in another house. And... Then we have six Bramley apples. Now, these apples come from Armagh, which is technically Northern Ireland, but we call them Irish apples. And simply, what you need to do is you need to try. If your apples are stemmy sweet, they have to have a little bit of sharpness to them. If they're very sharp, you can increase the sugar a little bit. But actually, these taste nice. They're not sweet and they're not very sour. Okay, so your six apples, you want to core them. Peel them, slice them very thinly, okay? So nice thin slices and put some cold water on them while you get the rest of your ingredients together. Leave the tap running, I do, and then that stops them from going brown. Into your Pyrex dish, as a little extra treat, I just get two slices of butter and just rub it in to your Pyrex dish and that will just literally help to give your apples a nice caramelization with some sugar and also help so that it doesn't stick so clean hands as always and then just smother your tray in that nice rich irish butter leaving none on your fingers okay so that's ready the rest of your ingredients are you want 85 grams of caster sugar or normal sugar you want 100 grams of soft brown sugar Again, if you don't have brown sugar, you can use normal sugar. Um, you want 50 grams of honey, 250 grams of butter, Kerrygold, 300 grams of plain flour, 300 grams of porridge oats, which if you don't want to use the porridge oats, you can just substitute by putting another 300 grams of flour, but the porridge oats add a really nice crunchiness to the crumble. And let's face it, nobody likes soggy crumble. It has to be crunchy. I also add 100 grams of desiccated coconut. That is completely optional. If you don't like coconut, don't add coconut. But I love coconut. And it just gives that very little hint of coconut in the crumble. And then finally, I have 100 grams of flaked almonds, which I have coated with one teaspoon of cinnamon. So there is no rubbing in to fine breadcrumbs, any of that for this crumble. We're literally going to line our tray with our apples and we're going to use the same bowl to melt our butter, our honey and our sugar together. And then we're going to add our flour and our porridge oats, mix them all in and we're going to spread it all over the top. Okay, you can add sultanas if you like sultanas or raisins to this as well, but I'm not going to today. So I'm going to start by lining my Pyrex with my apples and literally you're just going to spread them out along the bottom. Take about 45 to 50 minutes in the oven to cook. Okay, 
So we're going to sprinkle over the top of our apples our 85 grams of caster sugar. And that's going straight on top of the apples and that will help to sweeten up the apples. It will also help to soften the apples and make a nice juice so our crumble doesn't dry out. Okay, that's that part done. You can leave that over to the side whilst you get on with the rest. So the rest is your butter in your bowl, very simple. Your brown sugar in your bowl, very simple. Or if you don't have brown sugar, your normal sugar. Your honey in your bowl. And you want to melt all that together in the microwave. It's as simple as that. There's no rubbing in, none of that lark. So three minutes in the microwave and it's all melted. The butter, the honey and the brown sugar has all melted which is really nice. And then we're going to start adding in our dry ingredients. So first of all, we'll put in our porridge oats. Okay, and just stir to combine. Okay, once we've incorporated the porridge oats, we'll then add in our flour, our coconut, and then our We'll put in maybe half the flour first, because otherwise you might get the flour all over the kitchen. Do it in three stages. I kid you not, my friends, this is the best apple crumble you'll ever taste. And it is going worth going that little bit further for to make it more of a luxury crumble. You can pair it right back and just use butter, flour, and sugar to make your crumble topping, but I do feel that this is really giving it another level. Okay, and that's our flour incorporated. And then we're going to add our coconut and finally our flaked almonds and cinnamon. And if you don't like flaked almonds, you can substitute with another crunchy nut or you can omit it completely. And our coconut goes in. I've been known to make this with some chocolate chips as well. If we're having kids for dinner, we can put some chocolate chips in there also. But this is really nice. Okay, and then our flaked almonds and cinnamon can go. Now, once that's all more or less incorporated, You can see how nice that looks. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get in there with our hands. We're going to bring back our tray and we're going to pick up some of our crumble and we're going to start just crumbling it over the top. And this is going to go into a preheated oven of 180 conventional, 160 fan or gas mark four. And it's going to go in for about 45 to 50 minutes. Okay, so we've literally... Now, <clears throat> I know what you're saying, because Chris says it to me all the time. Why do you have to always cook so much? We will eat this, all of it, yeah? If you don't want to cook such a big one, if you're not having lots of people around and you're just having yourself and your partner or whatever, then you can literally half the recipe and just make a smaller one. Yeah, it's entirely up to you. But remember, once this is cooked, it will stay good for about a week covered in cling film. So you can have, you know, a few days of it if you if you like. Anyway, Nikolai doesn't do anything by half. We always do it full on. When he makes Christmas pudding, he makes two. When he makes Christmas cake, he makes two. Okay, okay so the timer has gone off. The apple crumble has been in the oven for 50 minutes. Scooter has been sitting waiting patiently for some, but Scooter has requested he wants ice cream with his. Chris would like custard and I want fresh cream. So let's get it out of the oven. Okay. Careful because it's hot. Okay, and there we have our delicious, crunchy, beautiful smelling apple crumble, and it's really crunchy which is lovely but it's hot 
So we'll let that cool down a little bit and then we will treat ourselves to a nice slice of apple. That, my friends, is mm. Mm. and that little bit of coconut makes all the difference. Sorry, I'm only supposed to have one spoonful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you very soon for another our Irish country life here in the west coast of Ireland. So, from Nikolai Scooter and Chris, au revoir.